The Feast of Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Eucharist, this is the heart of our life. I suspect that I would probably die if I could not participate in the Eucharist. Inexhaustible mystery. That means that it is more to be lived than to be understood. It means that it is more to be put into practice than it is to be comprehended. So in order to plumb a little bit of that great mystery, I just want to present to you a couple images that might help us live and appreciate the gift of the Eucharist. The first is the story of a young Jewish boy who was approaching about the age of six, and he was nervous and scared to go to school. He had never done that before. His parents sat him down and they talked to him and they talked to him and they explained to him and they explained to him. And they thought they had it figured out and the first day for school came and he was nervous and scared and they drove and they went in and he cried and cried and cried. And mom and dad couldn't take it so they took him back, put him in the car and took him back home. They spent the whole next day explaining, explaining, talking, talking. They put him in the car, drove him back to school the next day. He cried and he cried and they put him in and they closed the door and mom and dad cried as they went home because it's hard to leave your crying child behind. Well, the child didn't even make it to the first bell. He snuck out and ran back home. The next day, the parents talked and talked and explained and explained, and it just didn't work. So finally, they called their rabbi, and the rabbi said, bring him in. The talking has failed. So they brought the boy into the rabbi. The rabbi didn't say a word. He picked up the boy, and he held him close to his heart, and he held him there for a mighty long time. Didn't say a word. And then he put the boy down and sent him home with his parents. And the next day, he went to school. What words and explaining could not heal, the human touch and coming close to a heart was able to heal. I think that's what happens at the Eucharist. The first half of our Mass we call the Liturgy of the Word, and we believe the Word is alive, and we believe we need to hear the Word, and the Word can change our life. But there's also some times where explaining and explaining isn't enough. We need touch. We need to come close to the heart. And that's why in a few moments you'll be invited to come forward and let the heart of God touch you, and then you receive him into you. We need that touch. It can change lives. Second image, a young woman who had a skin rash, and she went to doctors and doctors and tried medicine and medicine, and nothing worked. So she was talking to her grandmother, and her grandmother said, come to my house for one hour every day. The young woman went to the grandmother's house. She made her lie down. The grandmother took her hands and simply lightly rubbed the rash for one hour every day, and within a week, it was gone. Medicine is important, and it can help, but human touch is maybe the greatest gift that God gave us, and in the Mass, we celebrate divine touch. And we believe that when you come to the Eucharist, Jesus is the divine physician. That means that he can touch us and heal whatever is hurt and broken and empty inside of us. So the Eucharist is not a prize for the perfect. You don't come here because you've done everything right. The Eucharist is food for sinners. It is healing for those of us who are broken. So we come to let Jesus touch us and heal. So as you approach, in a few minutes you'll be invited to do so, I invite you to bring your pain and your brokenness and give it to him. Let him touch you, receive him, and let him heal that. A third image from the legend of King Arthur. When Arthur was a young boy, he was introduced to Merlin, the magician or the wizard. And Merlin is a wizard not like Harry Potter. He is a wizard because a wizard for Arthur represents what we would call psychologically a fully developed human being. A wizard is someone who knows how to use everything around them and everything within them to be the best version of themselves, to be able to serve others. That's a lot. Well, Merlin is trying to teach Arthur how to do that. So when he becomes a king, he'll know how to serve others. So one of the first things that Merlin teaches Arthur as a boy is alchemy. Alchemy is the practice of changing base metal into gold. So one day, Arthur takes a lead pot, and he goes out to the woods to practice alchemy. And Sir Kay, who will become his foster brother, watches Arthur go into the woods, and so he follows him. And he says, Arthur, what are you doing? And Arthur says, alchemy. And Kay says, great, we'll be rich. 
and then Kay sits down and watches the lead pot, waiting for it to turn into gold. After an hour, after two hours, after three hours, Kay stands up and says, you're a fraud. You didn't do anything to that pot. And Arthur says, okay, you got it backwards. True alchemy is not changing lead into gold. True alchemy is where you try to let yourself be turned into gold. That's what I'm doing here. I think the Eucharist is a little bit like that. We have a God who can change bread and wine into body and blood of Jesus. Just think what God can do if we let him change us into the body and blood of Jesus. We come here to adore a mystery, but we come here to receive that mystery and let it become in us. Then we become turned into gold. Some of the saints and early fathers said that God came down and took on our flesh so that we might be able to share in who God is. God came to make us sharers in divine. That's why we receive Eucharist. And lastly, when I was a boy, I was trying to figure out Eucharist, and I was trying to figure out grace, and trying to figure out God, and I figured that Eucharist is Jesus, and I want to get as much of him as I can, so why can't I go to Mass like five times? I'm not a normal kid, obviously. And my parents tried to explain, well, the church says you don't abuse it that way. It's about love, not about getting something. You're not filling up with Jesus, you're falling in love with him. And I was trying to figure that out, and I thought of my heart as the place where Jesus goes. And I thought, if I just get my heart big enough, then I can receive more of Jesus and have more grace. I thought my heart was a pot, and my job is to make it as big of a vessel, a container as I could. Well, that worked for a while but it was kind of all about me. I want to get my heart bigger so I can get my fill of Jesus, so I can get the grace that I need to be who God made me to be. Well, that works for a while, but our faith is not about me, and it's not about you. Pretty soon I experienced failure, disappointment, pain, and pretty soon my pot couldn't hold that. And I noticed that there were holes in my heart, and that's when I began to realize maybe this life of faith is not about trying to get grace and fill up with it, but maybe the life of grace is about like a heart. A heart holds in it. A heart receives and sends out. A heart has tubes and vessels that go in and out. So maybe you don't fill up with God. Maybe you let God work through you. You become a vessel. That's how you become fully alive. I think the Eucharist is a little bit like that. When you come forward to receive communion, you're not filling up with Jesus. You're getting ready to participate in his divine life. And like any gift, a gift is never a gift until it is given away. And any sacrament is not just for you, it's for somebody else. When you receive communion today, God is asking you then to let God's life shine through you and go out and be Christ for someone else. Lastly, what's happening here at the altar? God is trying to change bread and wine into body and blood of Jesus. God is trying to change all of us into body and blood of Jesus. Then we open the doors and we send you out to the world because God wants to change the entire world into his son. And the place where he decided to start that today is right here at this altar. You're invited to participate in that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.